Hello viewers, continuing with the series on application of derivatives, today our focus would be on maxima and minima. Let us begin with looking at a dynamic representation, which will also help you to revisit the concept of increasing and decreasing functions. Let us take a look at a graph of a function, which as we discussed earlier, speaks a lot about the character of the function. Now, in this graph, we have a point which is free to move along its sketch and as I move the point A, the tangent also moves along. You just need to keep an eye on the changing slope of the tangent. As we discussed earlier, in this graph, the function altogether is neither an increasing nor a decreasing function. but as we look at this path, which is the, depicted by the red graph, the function is a decreasing function. So, the slope of the tangent is negative and as soon as it crosses this red path and starts rising up, the slope of the tangent becomes positive and that indicates that the function is an increasing function. We can also examine the same concept looking at the derivative of this function, which in this case is now the pink graph. As the tangent slope is positive, so is the derivative. So, from this point onwards, which is the value 3 on x axis, the graph of derivative lies above the x axis. Therefore, f dash x is positive, that is the function is an increasing function. Now, this is something we talked about in our previous lesson. So, what else is of interest? The moment I come across this graph and look at the point where the blue changes to red, from a positive value, the slope of the tangent has become negative. Same on the other side. If I look at the graph and the point A coming closer and closer to what we may address as the peak of the graph and we start sloping down, the value of the slope of tangent from a positive value becomes negative and that indicates that somewhere along this path, this slope must be also 0, which is exactly what is happening at this point. That indicates that the graph is going to take a turn at this point and the slope of the tangent being 0 also indicates of course, that the tangent is parallel to the x axis and the moment you reach this point, there is a certain peak in the function. This peak indicates that the function is taking a maximum value at least in this neighborhood. It may take a maximum value somewhere else beyond this point as well. But in this neighborhood of the point A, which is corresponding to x is equal to minus 4, this value of the function is the highest and that is the point of maxima. Similarly, as I come sloping down, the function hits a minimum value here somewhere and then starts rising up. Now, these are the points which are addressed as the points of local maxima and local minima, because in a certain neighborhood, they are behaving like the point of maximum value or the point of minimum value. This is what our focus would be in today's lesson to understand where do we have the point of maxima and local minima and how do we identify and verify whether such points are point of maxima and minima or not. One of the things is assured that if the point is a point of local maxima, then the slope of the tangent, that is the derivative at that point will always be equal to 0 and that is something which will play an important role. At the same time, it is not necessary that the derivative vanishing at a certain point indicates that the function must take a maximum or a minimum value at that point. Before looking at that third possibility, 
let us revisit what we have just done in a different way and try to understand what we conclude from here or does it give us a definition or a kind of a test to define and understand what point of local maxima and minima are. So, let us get back to our slides. Here at x is equal to minus 4, the function is taking a maximum value. What we observed was that around A, the derivative is behaving in a certain special manner. Left hand side of A, that is at points which are closer to minus 4, but less than minus 4, the slope of the tangent was positive, that is the derivative at those points was greater than 0. The moment you cross over from minus 4, that is take values which are more than negative 4, but close to negative 4, the slope of the tangent turned into negative. That is f dash x is less than 0 for values which are less than minus 4. In such cases, we say that a at a the maximum value is being attained. So, the local maximum value is being attained at x is equal to a and the point on x axis corresponding to a that is x is equal to negative 4 becomes the point of local maxima. Similarly, if you look at the value valley that is being formed in this graph at x is equal to 3. If we look at this point b and observe the slope of the tangent, then less than b the value of f dash x is negative, greater than b the value of f dash x is positive. That again indicates and confirms what we saw earlier that at b derivative must be 0. Then b is the point which is of interest to us at b the local minimum value is attained and x is equal to 3 becomes the point of local minima. Now, these are the points that we are looking at and from this picture itself one is able to say when the point will be a point of local maxima and point of local minima. So, we saw two possibilities and let us also take a look at the third possibility. What if the function is such that the derivative does become 0 at a certain point in its domain, but the derivative does not change the sign as the values of x pass through that particular point. Take a look at this representation. As I move the point along this curve, the slope of the tangent is 1. At a certain point, slope of tangent becomes 0 as well, comes down, takes values which are 2, 3 or 4 but they all remain positive. So, in this case the derivative does vanish at a particular point, but the sign of the derivative is not changing and that affects the shape of the graph as well. The graph is not turning at the point at which the derivative was vanishing. Such points are special points known as point of inflection. So, we have two possibilities clear cut point of local maxima and point of local minima along with it another possibility of something called as point of inflection. I think now you are ready to look at what is called as the first derivative test to identify whether a given point is a point of local maxima or local minima. The first derivative test says that if f is a function defined on an open interval i and f is continuous at a critical point c in i. What is a critical point? A point at which either the derivative is 0 or the function is not differentiable at c. So, for a function like an absolute value function, x is equal to 0 will be the critical point. Then we have if f dash x changes sign from positive to negative as x increases through c, then c is point of local maxima. And if f dash x changes sign from negative to positive as x 
increases through C, then C is a point of local minima. And the third possibility, f dash x does not change sign as x increases through C, then C is a point of inflection. These three conditions are going to play a role to decide whether a point is a point of local maxima or minima. At the same time, if we get back to this graph and see that as we looked at the point A and f dash x on the lesser side of x is equal to small a is positive, on the other side it is negative. It can be interpreted as saying that as x increases, f dash x that is dy by dx decreases from positive it is changing to negative, which also means that f dash x that is the derivative of y is a decreasing function at a. In other words, it is same as saying that the second order derivative must be less than 0 at a that was the condition for a function to be decreasing at a particular point. At the same time, if I have a point of minima, then what was happening? At b, we saw that the derivative of course is 0, but lesser than that, the derivative is negative as x takes values across b and become positive. That indicates that derivative is an increasing function at b, which also means that the second order derivative must be greater than 0 at b. Put together, this results in a second derivative test, which is much more functional in terms of applications, which says that if a function is defined on an open interval i and c belongs to i and let f be twice differentiable at c, then c is a point of local maxima if f dash c is 0 and the second derivative at c is negative. c is point of local minima if f dash c is 0 and f double dash c is greater than 0. Third possibility would be when f double dash c is 0 and f dash c of course was 0. In that case, we say that the test fails and we have to restore back to the first derivative test. Let us consider an application of the first and the second derivative test. The question says, find the local maxima and local minima if any for this function. Find also local maximum, local minimum values as the case may be. Of course, the task starts with first finding the first derivative f dash x. To find the critical points, put f dash x equal to 0. In this case, I get three values 0, 1 and 1 by 2. If I find f double dash x, I get a long expression, but you can see that f double dash at 0 is 0 since all the terms have a factor x. So, the second derivative test fails and therefore, you get back to the first derivative test that is take values less than 0 and more than 0. In this case, for x less than 0, take any value, say in this case minus 0 0.3. f dash x is less than 0. What about x greater than 0? Suppose x is 0 0.3, f dash x again is less than 0 and therefore, we have got a point of inflection. Considering second order derivative at 1, in this case again the derivative is 0 and therefore, second derivative test fails. As in the previous case, take values less than and greater than 1. Again in this function, because there was something special about the function because of the repeated factors, we end up with one more point of inflection. The third value that we had got as a critical point was half. So, f double dash at half is greater than 0 which means by second derivative test that x equal to half is a point of local minima. Local minimum value will be the function's value at half. In this case, as you replace x by half in the function, 
you get negative 1 by 64. That is the local minimum value. So, the concept of maxima minima is very closely related to the concept of increasing and decreasing functions. At the same time, the second order derivative test is a better test than the first derivative test. But if you have like in this example, point of inflections or cases where the second derivative test was failing, it is important to know and be familiar with the first derivative test. Point of inflection like in this example happened because of the nature of the function, it had repeated factors in it. That would not be the case in almost every question as you may see. I leave now you to try and practice more of the first and the second derivative test questions and get confident about their use. See you in our next lesson. Thank you. Thank you.